Hey, what's happening, pimps? How to make blood text inside of Photoshop. I'll show you the easy way and the hard way. The easy way is to use what I've already created. I'll give you the pack down in the description. Absolutely free, as always. And you can drag and drop it onto any object, image, or absolutely anything within Photoshop. But I think it works best on text. But I'll also be teaching you how to create it, what I did with the layer settings and the blending options to get it to look the way that it does. I went for a little bit of trial and error. I made about five different attempts of the bloody effect until I found one that I really liked and the client liked. And that's the best way to learn really when you're creating layer styles in the blending options. It's just to try loads of different things until something just clicks. And if you like this video, drop a like. And if you want to find more of my other packs, I have a lot of different drag and drop layer styles and assets on my website. You can go and check that out on griffingfx.com. Some of them are free, some of them are deluxe for those that want more variations and cooler effects, but I always make stuff for free. So the font that I'm using is called Antarlica. Like I said, it's down in the description. You can grab it absolutely free. And when I first typed out the text logo in preparation for shaping up the logo, I found it a little bit tricky because a lot of the letters are combined, which obviously is a really cool effect, but for moving things around it's a little bit difficult. So I started off using Alt and the arrow keys just to adjust the spacing between each letter. So I recommend starting out with that if you're doing this for a logo. And once I got it roughly how I liked it, I rasterized it and then cut out some of the letters so I could move them individually in random directions. Because the idea is we're going to try and make it look like blood. I figured you probably wouldn't want every letter to be perfectly next to each other. You know, it's going to be dripping a little bit. Later in the video, I'll show you actually how to do the drips. Because as you probably noticed in the intro, I made parts of the text look like it's actually bleeding like dripping down and I think that's a really cool effect so here I was happy with the layout of the text and I wanted to just to add a small white stroke so I double clicked on the layer went into blending options and made an outsized stroke and I lifted it up a bit until the text was a little bit more bold I then used the smudge tool just to make it a bit more imperfect because remember it's supposed to be a kind of liquid and therefore it's not going to be perfect. So I just gave it a bit of wiggling with the smudge tool. Then what I did is I control left click the layer, the text layer, to get a selection of the entire layer. And then up at the top I went select, modify and smooth. You can play with the amount you want to smooth it, it's going to be different for everyone. But for me I smoothed it by 15 and then on a new layer I pasted back in the white text. It's made everything a bit more fluid, it's made the letters kind of melt into each other instead of just looking like a stock font. I think this is a pretty important step for the blood text and you can see here the difference that that has made. And now from here you're ready to begin styling your layer. Okay, this is going to be a lot of experimentation unless you copy my exact settings, which of course I will allow you to do. I'll make it simple so you can copy them or get the pack. But for those of you that want to know the process behind it in case you're trying to use this, gain knowledge to make your own styles, I'll try to explain the thought process that went behind what I've done here to create the blood effect. So I used the bevel and emboss tool and I selected the colors of the highlights and the shadows. I changed a lot of the settings, I changed the smooth the softness, the size, uh, the angle is a very important thing to change to decide where the light is going to be hitting your text. And each time I improved the text in a direction that I liked, I copy and pasted the text and moved it onto a new layer and then continued editing just in case I wanted to go back to one of the older styles. Once I sort of had the base down, which consists of the depth, the size, the softness and the colors that I liked, from then on the angle did most of the work for me. You see that just by moving where the angle is here on the light in, you see that it changes so much much. Some of them are going to look terrible, but some of them are going to look really cool. This is essentially picking where the light is. If you had it right in the center, then the entire text would be completely white out or whatever your highlight color is. And then right off to the side, it's got more of a three dimensional dripping effect. So yeah, the shading angle does most of the hard work for me, but I still wanted to make more variations so that I could look at them all next to each other and let the client decide what kind of effect he wanted. I didn't know if he wanted it to be like a big 3D dripping effect or if he wanted it to be more subtle and just hint at the fact that it's blood. So yeah, you can see the settings that I've been rocking for each of these texts. And I've done all of this literally just using Bevel and Emboss and the color overlay, which created the base red for the text. If you go into the description, you can get a hold of the style effects already made in a pack. And then all you have to do is drag and drop it from the style section in the top right corner straight onto your text and it will be done in seconds, which is bloody sick. And you can also go on my website and get the deluxe style pack for loads of different 
styles that are kind of like this they're obviously not all blood some of them are like psychedelic effects some of them are slime effects some of them are ice some of them are fire they're all different effects which i find greatly useful when i'm doing design work for myself or for clients just to fast forward the design process sometimes and inspire you if this video helped you out make sure you drop a like subscribe if you're new to the channel and i appreciate all of you for watching and until the next video guys look after yourselves and make sure you wink at the tingle with that being said, see you next time, guys. Bye-bye.